globalizing crickets. They're creeping in. The cancer's coming closer. People don't really see it. Or they see it, but they don't really. It's transparent. They don't see the, 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 the danger. Uh, I've talked to you about all this stuff creeping in on us. We keep not doing something about it. For all y'all that thinks that you go, you make an excuse to not respond in some way to this thing. Your life is being changed. It's going to be more expensive and less fulfilling. I mean, that's what they call about austerity. It's shared um, shared prosperity is really the global international Soviet order. I don't talk really talk about Russia in this regard. This is a methodology of implementation. I talk about all this stuff all the time. It's just rolling on us. Just the dark. It's just the stinking bit abyss that we're sliding into. And if you think you cannot do something about it, well, so sorry. I don't know what else to say. This is a slow motion attack. And you will have to defend something or you will be paying. And you will pay in lots and lots of ways. You won't even realize it's, it's already, you're already paying it. I couldn't even imagine all the places you could talk about. You're already paying it. And it's going through your governments already. And I try to tell you all what's happening and give you the heads up for some of you to step up because it's only going to be a few anyway. And I'm wondering if there's going to be the numbers that we need anyway. But everyone wants to make an excuse like, oh, you can't do anything. And I don't know if that's the case. I would have thought about that. I would have thought that's the case maybe uh, 20 years ago. And then I got, as I say, I watched, walked into this. I noticed this, uh, realized what land disposal grants were relative to the governments, both the, in the United States of America with both the state and the feds. And I figured out with how that worked, together with all my other studies I'd been doing, that there was a, gl- a bright line, a, a narrow path that you could stand on and use that the principles from which and of which you could use to defend yourself. No. Everyone wants to say, oh, there's no, you know, they're looking for that as a silver bullet. It's not. You've got criminals in the world, and w- people are not cool. I don't know why that is. They want to beat each other down, and I don't know what that is, but they do it, and it, that's the fact, and you're not going to get around that. Now, you can hide your head in a hole uh, for a while. You can think you're protected someplace by not going out, not engaging, uh, but that's uh, the the... Hard comes upon us, and it comes in insidious ways. And again, all of us can't do, won't do everything. We aren't interested in all. We our talents, our, our skills aren't the same to be able to do it. But together, I think we can pull things together in a way that the pieces and parts start to fit together like a puzzle. Now, that's the only type of so-called unification, unity I'd like to see. But but you have to be there to you have to put your 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 piece of the puzzle into the fix. And so we breaking uh, on the uh, Twitter sphere or the uh, news feed. The notice to us is a late breaking information that I'm, I'm putting in front of my uh, my more normal information that I had t- uh, to put tabs on to get to because it's uh, just it just explains how insidious this cancer is in a place that in, in particular with the United States of America being being what it professed to be. And I see it's there. It's just not being protected. It's not the vigilant masses, uh, educated masses, insisting upon the liberty that they in, that was intended in the law uh, as well as the servitude that was there uh, that you could walk the narrow path to obtain for those of you on recast past cast and uh, the broadcast over at UCY or in the blogcaster this is btwrlm245 and uh, so right breaking is it very interesting in a way, it's uh, shocking. A part of me is, you know, it's, again, I got the little guy in me who wants to just see the innocence of the world and we all work, go, everything works together, kumbaya. Uh, that ain't the way. I mean, it's just not happening. So here, here's what we've talked about before, the internationalization, breaking on the set, the score that's been written for the history of man, uh, because he just won't. He just, uh, he's, he's, he is that human creature, uh, that animal, because he just wants to step up into his responsibility, make every excuse not to. And no matter how long it might take, and this is the thing, it's a, it's of ever, ever vigilance. It's forever vigilance. Not, not just in the next two minutes or three minutes or next year, the vote or any of that stuff, uh, but getting to the point, and I think this is the county, and apologize for my memory, not really pulling all these things together as succinctly as they might have used to. This is a, about Cook County, Chicago. Remember I pointed out Cook County was the first to make the no, the news, the notice, if it wasn't Texas close on its heels or one or the other, but 
Cook County, Chicago, of all places, I identified for you as the center of an internationalization attempt using the blockchain technology regarding your property. And I told you then, and then and, and, and it's on it's record now, it's in the broadcaster somewhere, uh, that uh, this was a serious problem against the problem. It was internationalization, uh, the blockchaining of slavery to, from your property to you, if you didn't understand how your property shouldn't cannot be placed in that and how to keep it from there. So this county, which is an in, is, was the probe using the international public private partnerships to do the takedown, mercenaries, foreign agents, to come into your record systems, your property, your landed record systems, uh, which is the thing that makes the United States of America unique in the world, or the history of the world even, if I can be so bold to say. Uh, again, not my opinion necessarily, as gu- not unguided. It was exposed by a Geneva-trained economist, uh, Hernando de Soto, who's, I told you, he's right in on this blockchain technology for, they want to tell you that they want to give people without property property rights because it's important, but they're doing it underneath this cent- so-called decentralized centralization of a blockchain technology, which is, is, uh, has, it can have many names. And right now, the biggest one going, the biggest, I think it's a scam. I think it's a pumping of the thing to get everyone excited because we're, we're just creatures of speculation and gamble. Uh, especially where it's just a, this inert thing called so-called money. As long as we don't have to put our uh, tail on the line for it, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll play the game. Uh, we don't understand the game we're playing. But here it is, folks. Uh, again, centered on this Cook County, uh, Chicago. Very uh, serious thing, although it's almost laughable. But, it, but it's actually people in government already have been working to move this along. And we're seeing the next iteration of the suggestion for people to buy into Martial law in America is the headline. Cook County Commissioner asks the United Nations to send troops onto the streets of Chicago. And I thought this was uh, just a talk about outlandish and fake news. But you actually have a video on the link I have. You can find it. Go ahead and Google it up. You'll find it. Uh, the, the, this guy actually talks. He actually says this with the news, uh, so-called news microphones in his face. So this is not a not just a surmise and not just a, a conjecture that something like this has happened. This is coming out of the commissioner's mouth himself. They want to invite. Now remember now, there's really this is a UN by this is a private a private organization. They want to invite underneath the ostensible need to keep the peace, the UN peacekeeping. They want to invite the UN into Chicago to stop the harm principally caused by guns. Now, I, I, there's lots that we can say here, I guess. I, I don't know how much more to say. We, why don't they want to stop the principal harm caused by the commissioners themselves that the commissioner on the video actually admits they have caused to bring this condition into a place? And understand that there's no guns, uh, or at least very, very restrictive gun uh, gun use or control or possession. It's an absolute wrong uh, Rahm Emanuel's in this place. Uh, absolute gun control. The UN has the knot tied in the barrel, but they're going to bring a UN peacekeeping force with guns to help protect the citizens of Chicago. Now, the uh, hip- hypocrisy here is, is I don't beyond. But my point here is, this was a county that's going to try to internationalize property and essentially take control of it. Remember, all that underlying control was to levy the property, to be able to control it, take it away from you when you didn't behave. Uh, correctly, didn't follow the proper course, didn't follow the codes, make it easier to steal. And it just so happens I've been involved in some, I guess, an advisory capacity and to in these very, very issues just here in the last few months. These people play for keeps, and you better know that they play for keeps, and you may not be feeling threatened by some place in Chicago, and who cares about all the blacks killing themselves in Chicago and the commissioner admits that these are people killing themselves. Uh, they don't have a scruple one to, to do another way. I don't understand it. Uh, but uh, here they are. They're using the worst place, the most divided place, in order to encroach in, in internationalization. And they're using the blockchain here in this county, but most importantly, they're not bashful here to admit they want to bring in a foreign military force to control this. 
Now, my mind immediately said, why don't you just kick that guy out who just admitted he was derelict in his office? But see, a warring people amongst themselves aren't able to do anything, are they? And that's the division thing. So this is a serious, um, well, it's a serious notice, but it's also really almost paragraph by paragraph and thought, uh, extended thought by extended thought. It's, this is the, this is what happens and how they take out your society and why it's so important to not make the excuse to not get involved someplace to keep it out. Get involved with yourselves. Get, do that so-called community service, but the real stuff, not the ones, the political services that they re render you useless to yourselves. But you're not going to come in in a divided fashion, and you're not, well, you kill yourself. You, you do, whatever your, your belief systems are, you, you don't have any respect for anybody, or you're trying to get ahead because things are really so bad, driven to you, driven down by these same commissioners, applying international rules, uh, the austerity of which is, puts people in places because they're not capable to understand it, puts them in a place where they think that's their only option, is to go steal it from somebody else. Uh, kill, kill the problem. Don't don't rethink this and say, wait a minute, maybe not having any guns and 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 not having any giving the victims a big make them more victimizable, maybe that's the problem. No, don't look at that. No, we're going to go in and bring more guns and take away the guns about the people and try to stop it that way, like that's ever really stopped. I've told you the big example for anybody if any want to see what the peacekeepers do is what happened in the Republic of Congo. Republic of Congo. They wanted to democratize the Republic of Congress, Congo, and the UN peacekeepers were the first, the point of the spear underneath the auspices and color of peace that ended up destroying a republic that modeled itself after the better ideals of the United States of America. The United States was on the backside of that, driving the spear point home. Now, now you understand what I've been talking about, the Middle East being a, ref a mirror reflecting the problem we have in the United States? The Congo is another one, and here it is, folks. I just I almost want to just sit here and relish in the in the in the in the shade that this is casting on this country. You are given every knowledge right here of what's been working under the skin that none of you and I. Okay, I'm going to get. I get it every time. Yes, I know some of you do. And you see why chat? Don't get on me about this. A few people that are there don't don't get on me about me saying nobody. You know, I'm not talking to no, somebody that's not, that is doing it. I'm talking about the most other all of you that are really not. Make every dang excuse not to find something in, that's important about this that thinks that if you just can't, oh, I can't do something about it and it won't happen immediately, that that means that you're exonerated. Again, if you don't do something, you become part of the accessory to the crime against everyone. That's all I can say. I don't even want to think about it more. And I know if I think about it more, I'll be upset. I'll be uh, then having to judge people for not doing their action, and I just know it's just it, not. It's in us to be apathetic and look for the easy way out. There is no easy way out. Uh, I don't know how many ways I can show uh, this is a war. It's not just because I say it. I can show it. What in what four minimum? I mean, this is what comes to my mind. Maybe four different ways we are besieged by war, and they declare it all the time in the United States. The Congress will love to declare war on anything that they want to uh, make a profit from and or make worse. Now, we just ain't got it. Well, here it is, folks. They want to declare war on Chicago and bring in the so-called UN peacekeepers, which destroy places. They're the point of the spear by the United States government itself, if not, and with other actors, certainly. But uh, let's just focus on the home front. If, if uh, This is just a, I mean, like, I wasn't even, gonna, it just came up. I don't even have a thought more than what I'm reading right here when this story hit the, hit the Twitter sphere. If you don't see this story, with what I've told you before, as the stepping, the pin, becoming more of the pinnacle of the example of what people will be living under, I really don't know what to say to people. It's not the end all be all either. This is just a little, little story that's connected up deep in time to very substantial things that people are embracing right now. They're buying in, just like the Soviet style is. They convince you to buy into this nonsense, and you do it. Why? Because you're frail. We all have this fallen nature. I don't know why people want to deny this in them or just cat. They want to be apathetic to that too. It takes a lot of work to be really responsible. Boy, am I learning that. And even then, I'm falling way short in lots of areas. To do what I do, I have to fall short in lots of other areas because there's just only so much time in a day. 
And there's only so many people that you can help or will help themselves, really. I've reduced my help down to what who will definitely step up for themselves. I don't have the time at some point where the rubber meets the road to try and continue to be uh, an, an ex, uh, someone to explain what is already clearly written if you just want to roll up your sleeves for a few minutes and go look. And I'm not asking you to do what I know and comprehensively. I'm saying go find, I always say it, this comes up over and over again. Find the wrong you need to make right and go make it so. You'll learn so much in starting that and it won't be an overnight job. And you may only be able to put 15 minutes to it. But uh, that 15 minutes starts to add up. Boy, oh boy, have I ever seen a little bit going on all the time. A little bit, little bit, little bit, pretty soon your bucket's empty. You start giving it out. You pour it out one drop at a time all the time, that bucket's empty. So why don't you start filling the bucket of action? Start putting your time in. Stop making the excuses. This is, I keep telling, you know, I say the word, but I'm not terrified. I just, I see the the, the doom and the, the the plan, the foisting of, of wrongful ways upon people. Uh, it, it, so I just see it so it's not really that much of a terror that way. But this is a real terror that people don't appreciate, I believe. They want to, and I think that's partly why they don't want to look at it. And I don't know, I still wonder why people don't want to hear this broadcast more than the numbers that do. And last week I think I made a pretty good point about what was going on in the Middle East to reflect what the United States is willing to do to us. We live here, folks. What are we going to, why do we continue to do this to ourselves and allow it to be done to us? It's a, it's a marvel to me at some point. At that, if I had just rest right there, I'd just throw my hands up like everyone else seems to have. And yet I do something else outside of that when I don't focus on the things I can't do and I focus on the things that I've decided, I find I can do. We make, we make the, the advantage and we return things back to the, uh, at least some some sense of basic objective basis, which I keep telling you is in the in the laws. Everybody wants to say, "Oh, we can't use those laws." Well, those laws I can find again. It's all how you frame your own your own prejudice. You can frame it so you just uh, work your way right out of doing a damn thing, and that's just you being a really smart monkey, figuring out how not to do a thing. How simple is that? And so we have these. Uh, what is the Orwellian concept of working here, the peacekeepers, that they make war, they're the tip of the spear, but there's one that run you through. Who's running, well, who's running you through? Well, it's the one handling the, the shaft. They're giving you the shaft of the spear, too. You're getting the shaft. Who's doing that? Well, it's the government. It's the government you were supposed to be vigilant and educated upon to keep in check. Why? Because you live here. It's that simple. Now, you don't want to take up that obligation. I would have to then say, move to a better place. And for all you people in Utopiaville, you're going to find it doesn't exist in the world anymore. That's why you see it. It's been, it's been taken over by the globalists. They got there first. You better turn around local and you better stop its encroachment locally. I always say that. I always think of William Roberts. Thank you, William Roberts. A great ally. When we learned and met up with each other way, way back over in Revolution Broadcasting. And I keep telling you, though, he found out quickly his book learning didn't provide him the experience in war, if you will, the actual battlefield experience when he went to have to apply it because they attacked his property. And he had to come up to speed very quickly. But because he had done his basic foundational work, he understood the place they came from. And we were able and I was able to show him in statute where those protections against that were, that he could start to formulate an action in the battlefield, the place where this, where this actually, where the lead flies. Pencil to paper, first of all, folks, majorly important. And so, uh, I mean, can I just read that? <laughs> it's pretty amazing. Uh, just the fact that they've offered this has to tell you you have some real um, inferior-minded people in office that don't really understand their oath. And they're clueless. They admit that they caused the problem, and they don't have the scruples to step out the way. Martial law in America is a title in a report that they're responding to here on this story. But Cook County Commissioner asks the United Nations to send troops onto the streets of Chicago. Can you believe this? I mean, at first, why didn't they just arrest the guy and throw him in for treason or something? But, see, we don't even have a scruple. No, the people there are killing each other. They don't care. 
And I'm suggesting to you, like these major stories that hit you, that are being told to you in the, no, the notice, the news, in any aspect of your life, this is one of those big, big notices to us. This is how it's getting done. They have no desire to even hide anymore underneath, underneath the, the color of the office. They just come right out and deny it, and then admit that they're derelict in it. So, and I didn't have enough time to go through all this uh, report. Well, can I get? I guess maybe I can flesh this out for you. We are headed. This general, this commissioner says, we are headed to the United States, United Nations, to meet with the Assistant Secretary General to talk about the violence in Chicago, the gun violence in particular, the bloodshed that is taking place in too many of our communities. Boykin, Boykin, said at a uh, press conference before the meeting. That's in the in the video. Uh, and, uh, I don't really need to read more here and waste any time telling you more. You either understand this or you aren't interested anyway, uh, and you understand this and you may not be interested, but you need to be interested in the point that you start to figure out where are you going to intercept it. This is all red. The seed of this cancer is in every place in America. And we've been, I've been, my colleagues have been working on how to, we're an anti-cancer uh, remedy, what we do. And you can too. It's right in the codes and the laws. It's all right there. And the problem we have beyond that is that these people are so well infiltrated that your uh, remedies don't work in the first instance. They become, and, I've, and so what you have to do is you have to, the remedy doesn't work in the first instance because there's an obstructor in the way. And we've identified them through a lawsuit as the Bar Association. And they're the sitting in the seat of decision. These are international agents as well. We already don't even know we've been taken over. But but it's all over but the screaming in a way. So you have to start screaming, but I've said found you scream in a certain way. And your first remedy is to show there isn't the remedy that the law was to provide so you can go after the people in the office. And that office will extend down to your law enforcement who's also in on it, whether they understand this or not. The same officer that's not arresting this commissioner for treason, the sheriff, is the same one that needs to be educated or found out that he's also violating the provision that kept the sanctity of this uh, this land, which is to protect your property. Not calling foreign troops to protect your property. Also understand, you call in the foreign troops with the guns and you don't have the guns, now you're susceptible. What happened to your being free or your freedom? That was dumb. So this thing starts to roll roll down the hill pretty tumble pretty quick when you start really looking at it. That most everybody listening to me, even though you know what I'm talking about and probably despite the fact you know what I'm talking about, will probably do not a whole lot in looking around and around where you are how this cancer is already in the seeds of your ordinances and your problems and, and won't even take a step in order to learn what I've been suggesting is a methodology of countering their method of destruction. And until we get more people, we it's just like a it's a it's an interim process because we have been taken over. And the thing is, is the question only becomes under international law, are you merely an occupied people or a conquered people? Those of you that would step back and say you're a conquered people is exactly the people I'm saying you need to rethink your position. Doing nothing admits you want to be conquered. And I don't know of any, how congruent your thought can be to any thoughts of liberty, any thoughts of uh, uh, organized society, any thoughts of uh, even improperly organized society that you can complain about. I don't see anything there that you can actually resort to in yourself that would allow you to claim that you had some freedom or you expected it. Because we have already the rules that show that it's supposed to be there. It's just being interfered with by criminals. And you're not taking the duty that's upon you in that society to do anything about it. As I've said, if you don't like that duty, it's presumed upon you to do what that duty imposed, whether you believe in it or not. And then therefore, if you don't believe in it, you either are going to agree with the oppression or the destruction or whatever they want to do, or you should move. 
and I'm gonna I'm saying that tongue in cheek, but also in reality, you're not gonna find a better place than the United States of America at the point of its property laws. What we're looking at is a systemic problem of the uh, foreign agents have uh, secreted them, themselves into the institution. And it's not the institution, it's those that are in the institution. And we tend to make these generalizations in order to have our apathy win the day so that we don't have to do, oh, we throw our hands up because we can't do anything. That's, all, that's not the truth. That's not the truth. And the remedy becomes us, our engagement. And as I've looked around, if we could just get more engaged, we would take and clean this stuff up pretty quick. And I don't think it has to go to anything more than than a thought in your brain that's organized directly and objectively, and then your persistence within your skill set to oust the occupier wherever they be. And we don't need the guns, and we don't need any of that. Doesn't mean we don't have, we shouldn't have the guns. It means that we don't need the guns. It means that we stepped forward and we stepped into our higher sense, our better being. We show show an example of how even as downtrodden, as oppressed as we are, how behind the game we are, we still can rise above. So here's your notice, folks. Martial law in America. They're asking of foreign troops uh, called peacekeepers the oxymoron hypocrisy from a UN, a private organization, public-private partnership, on your nation's soil. And you think, oh, it's over there. I'm telling you this is the globalist incursion in real uh, real evidence that your life, as you think you understand it, your rights, your properties, for as bad as they're being mistreated now, will not be available to you at all. And they'll have done it in such a, slick but easily destroyed way that that's the sad part for me that's why I don't go to the judge thing we are just going to be a people a fallen people didn't have the sense of a monkey so I guess uh, I don't need to say more I think of if you didn't get it by the headline and tie and integrate everything I've said in the past with relevant to the uh, globalization of the United States of America, uh, you're really not listening to me. You're looking for excuses. You Maybe you like to hear how I've integrated it, and so you're entertained by me. Folks, we're looking at a serious problem. This is the matter of conquest. This is a matter of your life. You know, you'll just agree that that was the way your life was, and in fact, it wasn't. So, I don't know what more to say. There's a, um, in fact, I think I was hearing it on the prior show on UCY. They were talking about how you address people. And I think the comment was being made about you, you know, well, I pay your, your salary. Well, you don't. And you, so don't attack them. Well, who pays them? What you do is you go to what they've agreed to by their oath or their delegation of authority. And you show that the objective base that they think is their job is being violated by them. And you do that right after, if they won't listen to your conversation, and you try to be as personable, if I can use that term. You try to be as a people to each other. You try to be as a helpful to each other in instructing a better a better sense of things. And, and if you can't get that communication line going, then it's probably not going to be working for you. And you'll, you should be able to find that really quickly. But if they become obstinate about their imposition upon you, like they have some, uh, they're the authority that you can't touch, well, then you go, you have to go to that objective basis and show that they don't have that authority. Now, how this commissioner has the right to go to the UN at all without it being a, some sort of sedition, I, I'm, I'm surprised that nobody uh, really starts to hammer down quick and, and, and work that out and get this guy out of office and get the rest of them with out and get rid of the blockchain in that county and start showing that there's a whole other way that the people are being oppressed that may actually be driving them to some extreme even though the truth would be that, those, that anybody who does that, it doesn't stop well, it stop the war amongst ourselves, doesn't have it in them to stop, and I, I, then I wonder about them. And that's a different type of problem. But getting that's something that's way beyond what I could even deal with. So that's where, this is, I think, the major news for today uh, for you. I hope you take this very serious notice seriously, and everything I've been saying to you, this is speaking exactly to all that stuff. Uh, this is the things that they've been bringing on, those smart cities, the climate change nonsense, all the, you know, we just heard that the 
World Bank's not going to invest in, in oil. They call upstream oil and gas. Uh, well, that's going to bring on to you a future expensive energy system. I don't know how you can't see how that's going to work. It's bringing in the technocratic smart system where you no one says where this energy comes from. And if it's not going to come from anywhere, actually, because it can't, there really isn't a viable alternative at this point for fossil fuel. And it's not even fossil fuel. That's I don't know of any fossil I've ever heard or found for this stuff. But this is the name they do. At any rate, there's no no viable no viable alternative at this point. There are some alternatives. They're not viable with respect to the amount of energy that we need as efficiently as it can be made with the fossil, uh, with these petroleum products. So. I don't know what these people, the end result is, except that they can't produce. In the meantime, they're reducing the population or funneling you into uh, your apodments, which will only be provided with so much power. So they can meet the demand. But your industry will have to fail because there's not going to be much there. So you just watch how this thing would have to work. You will be forced into austerity. And the way they do that is the monetary control. Whether the, bit, whether the World Bank funds it and sub, stops subsidizing oil, which means that your oil is actually costing more for those places that are subsidizing. Your food is actually causing more. But for the sake of all the people, they spend the money there and they can direct what you will be getting. They then can control how much it's going to cost you. And it's all the same methodology. So I, we watch as the country... Now, the United States, and this is not just the United States, even without, even without its property laws, people are going to suffer. Austerity is like a fire. It's a cancer. It will affect, it can affect every living organism, and it doesn't care. And the people who are running the inoculation centers of the cash exchange, the gate closures and openings, don't, are the ones that will ruin and run and ruin and destroy your quality of life under the idea of the promotion that they are improving the quality of life. They didn't tell you it's the, the quality they've decided. See, I'm not really focused on that martial law more than I'm looking at the functions. Because I, I can already show you we are under martial law. So it's not even about that. It's how the administration of that's going to happen. And So I want to, again, that's, I mean, there's so much to really talk about in all this. How deep the analysis can go. This is not just an idea on front, oh, you can't get nothing done. You're going to have to get something done. Something. So we're watching the crash and burn. We're watching the in, in, institution of certain things. I, I'm just, in a way, I'm shocked I didn't hear a peep out of anybody. Oh, even already, we should have seen the Twitter sphere and this light up. And, and, and people running down and, and, and hang, you know, dragging this guy to the court and finding whatever the charges. They start labeling these people with charges, uh, with, with, with their, their, even the minimum, their election of their office to even think of such a thing. Especially where the man out of his own mouth says, we caused this. I mean, he's given you all the evidence of action, and I don't really see the Twitter sphere blowing up. I don't see the... the the flaming conflagration going through to stop any of it. And that's going to be our downfall. That's the problem. We'd rather do discussion of other things. And uh, I've said, uh, I said I was going to stop. I'll, I'll move on. Uh, super serious, folks. This is right, right in our face. Getting it right in your face. And you're going to be a cricket, aren't you? Maybe a roasted cricket after we found a man dies after bursting into flames in unexpected circumstances in London Street. Wow, that was pretty cool. That caught my mind. Uh, you know, spontaneous human combustion was the first thing I was thinking about because they can't figure out how this guy died. He was a, a John Nolan, retired construction worker, originally from Ireland. They found him in the street ablaze. You know, he was now 70 years old, and he died from his injuries, and no one knew how to stop it. And uh, the people, the emergency people, got him uh, to the hospital, and, and uh, they have not figured out more than that he died from being from bursting into flames, and there's no reason for it. So, I thought this was an interesting anomaly as we watch our nations crash and burn. Maybe another uh, signal here. Where people are going to start uh, ex exiting uh, in this uh, horrific manner. Another health, uh, why you and why you have to move things along here. 
uh, getting the body off the street and taking care of it. I wanted to get to this story, but a public uh, service announcement for you all. Those of you that don't care, I, I've, I've uh, always cared a bit about my food, and, uh, and this was always uh, kind of bugged me a bit. So I'm, my uh, my obsession seems to be confirmed in the legitimacy of what it was. Don't eat food if a fly lands on it, as they carry more dangerous bacteria than previously thought. So it warned scientists. So the scientists hadn't really studied it. And they didn't really think about much. Oh, they carry these flies uh, on your food. Maybe even went on to flew onto some corpse. They'll come onto your your sandwich and you know, when you eat. And so brushing it off is maybe not such a good idea. Most picnickers, and this is not the time of the year, but uh, for flies. But remember this when summer comes. Most picnickers would br- brush away flies from food, thinking nothing of bugs briefly landing on their sandwiches. But a new study suggests the insects carry far more dangerous bacteria than previously thought, meaning sandwiches are best avoided if they have been contaminated by flies. Researchers at Penn State Eberly College of Science in the United States found the common house flies carry salmonella, E. coli, and even bacteria, which lead to stomach ulcers and deadly sepsis. There's your 50% of the population that we talked about before behind the woodshed on this very serious uh, disease. Uh, where you have ulcers, and your ulcers are not from stress, they're from a bacteria. Apparently the flies can carry them. And who would think of it? You crawl out as a maggot uh, from your pile of dung, and then go fly to the no- local, uh, the nearest sandwich. Why, well, who, who, what could go wrong here, folks? So, word uh, to those of you that uh, uh, don't consider too much here. Uh, people have had, uh, had some notion that there were pathogens that were carried by flies, but had no idea of the extent to which these is true, and the extent to which it was transferred uh, they are transferred, but uh, we believe that this may show a mechanism of, for pathogen transmission that has been overlooked by the public health officials. And when they look at it, look at they have a they have a transmission a vector insect to go do exactly what they're saying here happens. So just a word to the wise: you see flies, uh, maybe it's just not a good idea to do anything around where they uh, they do anything. I guess that never makes sense to me. Yeah, but apparently, a lot of people don't care. But now scientists are looking at it maybe for the first time to say, oh, these things are pretty creepy. They carry a lot of pathogens, and we don't really want to mess with that. On the other hand, it's pretty fascinating how Mother Nature spreads this stuff around. And in a way, isn't that our own natural inocul- inoculation if we survive? So, very interesting dynamic. Not that I condemn much of any of this, just to look at the neutrality of the information, but... For those of you that uh, find yourself uh, maybe sick, have ulcers and this and that, and and aren't, aren't so fastidious about the uh, type of bug that flies on your food, maybe maybe that's where it's the cause. One of the causes the the, 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 the look get past that are transparent to your, your your gaze. Another thing coming on now for the holiday season, uh, and I didn't know about this, but interesting. And nonetheless, as a holiday hazard for those of you that might be interested, uh, canned bread. A recipe for botulism poisoning was a report. Uh, happy holiday! Holiday baking is staple for many gift givers, but bread makers should be should take caution. Baking making bread in canning jars creates a ready-made package, but poses life-threatening risks. So those of you that are uh, doing this, be careful. I mean, I don't even know if you can do this because uh, you go read the story, and there's just no way uh, that the condition is not dangerous. Uh, it creates botulism, and it'll, it can hurt you and kill you. And I think the two takeaways I got from this in the story were uh, the, the, the quote these from the report, these recipes have very little to no acid, providing the perfect habitat for growth and, uh, of uh, Clostridium botulum, bot, botulinum and its toxin that causes botulism poisoning. And the second point was, so first of all, the the ingredients are not such that they would not help foster and encourage the organism. And secondly, canning manufacturers do not endorse baking in their canning jars for a variety of reasons. So the manufacturer is trying to, um, they have the heads up on that. So maybe you, you should uh, not, well, maybe you're a closet uh, psychopath. You shouldn't actually bake bread in these things. And I would I wanted to pass that on, given this is the uh, so-called holiday season. Now, what that what you do for gifts, we also have to give uh, the bread as a staff of life. Uh, and uh, trying to give food to people and the homeless, even in these times of uh, 
a good a goodwill on earth, a, a peace among men, right, and women. That's been kind of knocked away now by these new, just like the Cook County interference, international interference. You cannot go to a town without uh, being considered a criminal to help the homeless or the needy. So since so here's a, now so we're moving into the from the warning section into the warning, but this is what you can do about it section. Apparently, uh, how you counter uh, these things again, find the wrong you want to make right and make it so. Here's an example of it. This is this is the non cricket section, I guess, of the broadcast. Since feeding, it's pretty pretty stand up. It's actually going to a high re- uh, right up front on top of a big threat against you when you do this. So you have to understand that you're doing it, and you also understand what I've been telling you. You don't do it on your own. You probably have to come with a group. You got to come with your own gang against their gang. And uh, since feeding the homeless is now illegal, then certainly don't use that uh, baked bread uh, in a in a canning jar. A group carried AR-15s to give out food, and it worked. Feeding and clothing the homeless in the land of free has become a revolutionary act. Luckily, however, there are still good people willing to carry out that act, and apparently carry and bearing arms to do so. In December 2014, the Dallas City Council enacted Ordinance Number uh, 29595, which makes it illegal to serve food to the homeless without jumping through a status myriad of bureaucratic hoops, including a fee, training classes, and written notices. If one should not need, one should not need, the opinionated part here, one should not need to file multiple forms and pay a fee to obtain a permit to find, give food to those in need who are willing and ready to accept it. Now, let me go back up to the prior paragraph, which kind of got me all stammered, because I got two words, two sections that really just drive me nuts. This term statist, uh, we've talked about it before. Let's excise it. It has nothing to do with it. And myriad of, for those of us, uh, I'm not too much of a grammar Nazi, but it just this one kind of bothers me a bit. Uh, I just wanted to make, I always see it and I want to mention it, but so today I will. Myriad of, can we stop saying that? Can we just drop the of? Uh, save a, uh, we'll save all that ink to the two letters in the extra space. Uh, it's myriad. Just use the word myriad. This is not my Nazism. This is from an English teacher that jumped on me when I didn't understand, and I found it very interesting, his discussion and his explanation. Uh, myriad means many. Now, I want to have you put many in a sentence and put the word of behind it and tell me if that sounds right. So if myriad is, it means many, can you stop putting of? Okay, so that's my little grammar for all the other things I may not do right. Uh, that one I would like to see fixed too. One less word, and it makes it cleans up the sentence. Through a through a, a myriad bureaucratic hoops would have been plenty right there. So getting back to the point, though, I wanted to point out for those of you that picked it up, they said that you can't serve uh, this food without getting a permit. Now I wanted to touch base on this for those of you that pay attention and listen, and also. Uh, maybe because uh, now these people went out with AR-15s to protect themselves, and it worked. The cops would come by, see it, and they wouldn't engage these people carrying this group of people. They were handing out food and clothes and whatever they were doing, sleeping bags, all that stuff, tents, uh, and the cops didn't affect, uh, interfere with them. So I don't know if I want to push that side too far. Uh, this is one of those things where the government starts to understand what you're doing, finds out more than you, uh, finds out how they're going to deal with that condition and then you that doesn't work again after a while. Uh, that even though it worked, uh, and it should be a bad law should not be enforced, they were enforcing it. I want to offer something else as a, another thought on how you would also collater- um, parallelly address this to get this thing removed. Uh, part of the idea here is really let's go back to the permit. Did you did you catch that a permit was required? Did you remember when I've told you what is a permit? Uh, it's a, and let's just go back to a basic definition. And I've been looking around, although I haven't done a very uh, complete due diligence, and I don't have the time to do that. Uh, generally, it's a uniform definition across the nation that a license is a permission to, a permission, it's a permit, certification, registration, uh, what else, or license, all right, to pursue some activity, typically a trade, occupation, or profession. In other words, it sits in commerce jurisdiction. So a permit is a license. A license is a commerce authority. Where people are doing charity, 
well, I guess that they've extended charity to commerce, but it did the, is that actually what's happened? No, they couldn't. So charity is not commerce. How can they ask for a permit, which is a commerce subject matter? I think would be a better thing to press against this than your, your AR-15, even though I would say bring it with you because it worked. But start working on showing in law they have no authority to make a permit and commercialize your gift giving, commercialize your charity, commercialize your good Samaritanism. Start getting a different thought in your mind about how to address these things. While it's interesting to see they use the AR-15 in a group, that's just a gang going up against a gang. That's not them going out and not feeling they could do so peacefully without the weapon. Excuse me, the arms, I should say. So, if I can offer a way to look at this, you're going to see this extension of state authority and, and local authority beyond the context of its actual use. When you, and I would ask, when you know that permit is a commerce related regulation, what is charity have to do with that? To the extension that your gift giving of it to anybody is within the scope of a permit. Now, I want, I'll rest that right there. I, I, I want people to really think differently on this stuff. I, I think when you approach it that way and you make, you have a group, all these people, these, this gang of people with AR-15s, a few of them should be able to write a simple question and assert a certain position and or maybe enjoin that law because it does in, interfere beyond what it's able to do. And as you look in your own state statutes, your injunctions only take about, well, uh, they can take as little as five days. They can extend to, depending on which one, from 10 to 14 days. So these are not op options that uh, take a whole lot of time. And so I wanted to offer this observation. It's what I talk about periodically, uh, regularly, because it's the same interference. It's the same thing with the uh, permission, a permit to carry concealed weapons. What is commercial about your right to keep and bear arms? That a permit can be applied. What is commercial about charity? That a permit can be applied. And if it can't be applied by the subject matter area of its need, then you've identified how the law was wrong and how to get, how to enjoin it or have it declared uh, you can also do a declaration a dec declared that it's unlawful. If before you go to the court, you can go down and you can say, "Look, here's how, here's what you've done wrong, uh, Mr. Commissioner or Mrs. Commissioner. Uh, are you going to remove this? Or are you going to be? Uh, we're going to have to put the pressure on you privately for this failure to cons constrain the, uh, the, the 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 county's or the city's authority." You've extended your authority under color of authority to interfere with a right I have to give. And you don't have a warrant to do that. That's a, well, hopefully in this state you'd find that's a felony. You look underneath your penal statutes. Yes, those admitted, those admiralty things. Uh, you, and you'll find you're looking for a theft by extortion or theft by coercion. Uh, theft by extortion is the property itself. And theft by coercion is the right to the property. They're two distinct charges, and they're in most places I've found they're felonies. Make sure that they are, because that makes it a mandatory position, and then you can start getting your group of people to start focusing in on whether or not that DA is going to be an aider and a better of felonies in your in your town to strip you from the your right to be charitable. That was probably one of the things reserved to the people anyway. So I'm trying to offer here weekly different ideas through these different pathways, uh, how you can take these news news articles and change them, uh, find the evidence right in them to go after uh, what you need. Don't be silent. The silence is killing us. The silence is allowing the others with the plan and executing the plan to come to the day when Chicago, Commissioner Chicago, wants to go to the UN peacekeeping force to invade his territory because he screwed up. No, frame it like that if that's the way of it. Frame it better than I frame it. I'm only talking off the top of my head as I think about this stuff. I haven't even sat down to really deeply think about it. And I can tell you, there's a lot sometimes to deeply think about when the system is attempting to 
get you off the point that you've made. In fact, I'm dealing, I'm dealing with it right now. There's a very serious status position about property in this country, and they attempt to obstruct that, and they attempt to make questions that are not relevant, that they try to get you to commit and confess away from that protected st- status. I don't even know how to describe this to most of you, certainly not in the time of this broadcast, if you're not involved in property, to even understand. And this is what they do to us. Uh, and again, that's where I'm, I mean, this is just something I can't even give to you until you have that problem yourself. And uh, This is what we're up against. This is why the remedies, they're there, but they may not be direct. And you may have some steps to go through some, they'll try to traverse the point that you're making, cause they, and that proves they see it, that you have to be responding very particularly so that you don't walk off your own path. You maintain the path you kept. In doing so, you make the evidence that they were interfering and delaying your remedy. That's on them now. That's on them. It's like a, a kind of a in the in the dialogue, the letter phase of this, not the filing phase. You uh, show show me the law you're using here to do what you're doing. A thing that when you get the answer anyway isn't something that you can use to delay. I'm going to take a little pause there. I just gave you two points on how you defeat somebody. Given that you know the law and it's right, you know that it's there and they can't, and they're traversing that, even that. Their duty's been violated. They're derelict. You just did a a, a soft show cause demand. And they either come back with the answer or you prove that they had nothing and there is a delay. And delay is denial of justice right there. Is that on your task? No. You have to focus back on the task, but you now have that, you can now mention that in your communication. That's a whole lot better than just having an opinion on how they're violating people's rights. You get specific to know your law, know their limitations, and you point it out to them. So, again, how outlandish that you can't help feed the homeless, help help care for people that need the help, that a government would step in your way is, is the Chicago Cook County problem. No different. It's already there. But down in Texas, no less, is what I said. Was it between Texas County, one of the Texas County clerks or the uh, Cook County uh, court, they were putting the blockchain in. Remember? This is no different, to, and if I can say it again, this pedophile thing. I told you, I started in one state, I... The earmarks were all over the other side of the country in Pennsylvania with Sandusky. And then when there, some people were involved with that organization and the people around them, I said, it's jumping over to BBC. How? Because the same method is being, the same uh, points are being exposed, that, that you can't have those points without having that action going on underneath the skin of it all. Again, you'll see it in Florida, too. It's, it's really everywhere, but there, there's certain places that kind of rise up. That These are behavioral control centers that they try to, uh, you know, be like a, for Florida, it's how will the older folks react that don't call it out. They keep it underneath the skin of calling out the problem because the older memory, given that it's still there, can say, hey, wait a minute, this is principally no good and, and form a resistance. And so these are all, con- these are behavioral modification data acquisition centers as well. You think you think you have right? Oh, you carry your AR-51, AR-15s around. Uh, we're we're going to put these codes here. Where do you go with that? Well, now they're going to do a resistance. A group brought out. One gang brings out their guns, hoping that the other gang won't bring theirs out. I don't think that's peaceful. I don't think that's under law. That's a response. It may be viable. It may be what you have to do, but it may not be the best one. So let's let me offer again a quick analysis. They impose a permit. I can't find that a permit is anything other than a permission to pursue essentially a commercial activity or uh, something underneath that's regulable by the by the state under its police powers. Your charity is not that. I think that's been reserved as well. So move move in that direction, uh, folks. In Texas, everywhere, everywhere they have these things. Start looking to figure out the limit that the government is supposed to be maintaining that they haven't. And hit them right there. Very narrow path, very narrow point. It's not that hard. Again, the notice is here for us to see. I can see right in the discussion, uh, the missteps, right in the report, that anybody should be able to see and say, oh, like wake up in the morning, you look at the newspaper, well, we can address this. This should be done within two weeks. 
Plus, you're getting the you're getting the you'll you'll get involved and you'll see how how uh, abjectly corrupt your locale is, or or how conducive it is to keep the law. And if it's conducive, congratulations, good for you. Work better, you know. Work you make that go to other places if you can. That's another decision you'd have to make. I'm not asking you to do, but uh, if you don't defend yourself, uh, you don't defend others. They're not they're not going to be defendable. The homeless are kind of helpless. Remember, I mean, this is the thing. If you're divided, you're helpless. If you're uh, incapable, you're helpless. It's not that you're helpless in yourself. You're just not you're just not able to do it on your own anymore. It's beyond the whole thing has become behind you, and I'm suggesting that was a plan as well. How do you go to Southern California and have a homeless rate where people who have jobs don't have homes is a plan? When you heard it before, we were told your things are going to be so expensive. You weren't going to be you could be have a job and not have a place to live, and now we're seeing it, and nobody. Everyone's crickets to that point is really astonishing to me. So this is the same. It's a method. It's how they take us down, and it's how people accept it. And I come here every week to try and show you there's something that you have to decide. You just have to decide on something, and then you work that through. You just keep working that through. That's the remedy. It's not a solution. It's not the answer. It's not a silver bullet. It's what you have to do. And I, 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 maybe it's a conjectural theory. I think the more of us that doing what we have to do, I think this speeds up this process. So well, for those that would say, I don't have anything to do, there's nothing to fight, it's no use anyway. If you don't fight, they come and take your stuff. Uh, here's an evidence that, uh, that they do that. And if you resist and have the right discussion, here's another non-cricket uh, response that you respond. In this case, you have to wait till they attack you, but I'm saying if you have the knowledge of your property, they probably wouldn't be able to attack you. You'd have been able to constrain it, and we do this all the time, especially with the Forest Service. Oh, and the BLM, the Bureau of Land Management. There's a way to make the record right up front that this doesn't have to come here. However, here's a court case that if you didn't stand up, uh, you would have them take, your, your central government would take the property they granted, and there would have been nobody to know. And if you don't know about this, then, and it comes on you, even inside your towns when they do these code enforcers, it's no different a taking style uh, than, as I see, this this a water issue. But here's a non-cricket. You have to respond to protect your property. But the point is you have to identify you have the property. You have to make sure that you're not mistreated to be the property. And they do this not really as you. They get you to agree you're this legal entity that they've established by a fraudulent record or the fraudulent use of a record. And that all can be identified. But uh, let's move on to what you you have to do. Otherwise, you die. You lose. You're gone. It's over. You get taken advantage of. And I'm going to offer here, look at the harm, notwithstanding the so-called law to protect you. Again, this is not the remedy, it seems. It is a remedy because eventually it brings back something. But this is the license that was built into the Constitution as well for the government to encroach that most people don't know how to make a record against in the first instance. And so we get to this point. And at this point, you actually start to see that there is a property right and that it, it can be taken and that there's compensation that have to be paid. And I'm not agreeing to all this. I'm just saying here's the report. And this is a talks to uh, impliedly speaks to the Clive and Bundy thing uh, with the forage rights, and this is the right of property and his rights antecedent the agency and his rights antecedent the grant for the forage itself, the mere claim of the best use of the thing on the land, and in fact a multiple use of things. Fed court rules for ranchers against Forest Service in property rights cases. Uh, excuse me, in property rights case. A federal court upheld the right of a New Mexico family of ranchers to access water on federal lands, determining the right dated back to the territory of New Mexico. They send a chill down your spine, folks? Give you chibbers? This federal court is the Court of Federal Claims. If I understand right, it's the Article Three court, but it's an equity court. So understand these jurisdictions uh, that uh, this is now, look, listen carefully for the Clive and Bundy condition. And the thing I told you when I was speaking in criticism a bit of how people can research, retell their research 
which can be 100% correct, but applied in the wrong way to make a wrong answer or interfere with someone's property. This case shows the rights prior are property. These are no different than Clevin Bundy's condition. Uh, Susan G. Braden, Chief Judge of the United States Court of Federal Claims, ruled that the United States Forest Service took property from the ranchers by restricting access to water for their cattle, a right to access they held before 1905, in which the United States Forest Service has fought, allowed to continue from 1910 to 1989. Braden filed her decision in Sacramento Grazing Association Incorporated at all plaintiffs versus the United States defendant November 3rd, 2017. That's a quick turnaround, isn't it? Sixteen federal claims judges have nationwide jurisdiction over a variety of cases involving monetary claims against the federal government, including cases about, quote, takings, Taking private property for public use without compensation is forbidden by Fifth Amendment, by the Fifth Amendment to the Constitution. Uh, don't know if I want to read more. You can get the broadcaster or get it yourself. The point is, uh, I want to just hearken back to what I told you about rights and the forbearance. The statement that the USFS has allowed since 1910 to 1989, this uh, uh, action, really almost is irrelevant in some regard that they had claimed, but it points out that the forbearance was used by the court to pr produce the concurrence of the government with the uh, conveyance of those rights. Just what I told you before on the other broadcast, a couple of weeks ago, I don't remember. The rights were accessed prior to the existence of the Forest Service itself. Uh, I also mentioned that. That's a, a, a smaller detail, because the rights were either established or they weren't. The agency has nothing about that. The agency can do nothing to that without it being compensation required. Now, the end of this report is not so, I didn't think it, as highly of it as the beginning. And then I noticed that it was being protected, it was being uh, prosecuted uh, by uh, Pacific Legal Foundation. And uh, we, uh, at Jefferson Mining District, we attempt, we contacted the Pacific Legal Foundation. They would not take our case that we won by default in, in 2013 because they didn't want to address it on the property rights side. They took it as an administrative issue, and that the agency didn't have the right to do what they did. The answer in this case, I don't know if it's actually satisfactory. I haven't really looked at the case more to find out. But the court says to the, uh, to the, to the parties now, uh, Forest Service and you go back and uh, see if there is land and water you can exchange uh, to make it right. Instead of trying to protect uh, these uh, thorny thistle things, these uh, supposed endangered species, I thought was actually the wrong answer. But that's an administrative thing. That's not a property rights, actually, outcome. So while we see that there is property, I wanted to point out it's property. It was, before, it was obtained and conveyed before the agency. It was obtained and conveyed even by forbearance of even that agency afterward until they started to complain and whine and moan. Uh, they didn't have a right either, apparently, all this time either. So they've been harassing the property owner all this time without remedy, actually. And the remedy that the court has dissolved, dissolved uh, decided is that, well, now you two can go back together and see if the Forest Service can exchange some land so you continue having the water rights. In other words, mitigate the taking. Well, that was all supposed to happen ahead, but they did it on the fact of the endangered species, which I don't believe is really pl plausible where the we didn't hear whether or not the, it was a, 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 where the ability to maintain the species was practicable. And so we I hear a big problem here, but I wanted to point out for my part is that uh, you have to be very careful on what you bring to bear on property and property rights relative to the obligations and duties and the, the different avenues of acquisition or conveyance. They all, everything on this property law stuff means something. I've been really astonished how similar two properties can be, uh, can be when you look at the general facts, but when you look at the specifics, how different they are and how and what laws are coming to bear and to make the, 
the chain of authority. And it's not in either direction. It's what the direction has to be by those chains of authority. And then you have to be aware of, really, all the chains of authority that can come to bear so that you don't make a mistake. So just wanted to point out, you don't step up and fight for your property. It will be taken. And it will be taken under the collar of authority. And that's not going to get, that doesn't seem to be matter right here to this court either. But this interference was a really a felony all this time. But see, the claims court is only for damages on taking. And I don't understand how they could actually do the takings. It was irreparable. It's irreparable and the value of which you can reduce to market value. But how do you do that when you're actually taking out the use as well, which is fundamentally, when you take it out, actually violating a provision of the law. You're not supposed to take out the productive capacity of the nation. It turns on national security right down to your last little bitty property. You're not supposed to interfere with this. So there's a whole lot that isn't spoken to, but it's not spoken to because I think the, the Pacific Legal Foundation only went through the administrative side and the judges go with it. And we've had experience with this claims court, and that's what they do. They, they attempt to they put everything. They allow the DOJ, it's supposed to be your friend, uh, the, your friend as a, as a guaranteeing this conveyance, supposed to protect their guarantee and not become in breach of this trust duty. Uh, they come in and tell you, oh, you don't have a property. Just like I told you, the global order requires. The, what, the, what, the ten planks, the first plank is you will have no property? The judges and the, and the DOJs already, these are bar members already doing this in the claims court. But see, this stuff is so, this, what we're talking about here with this water, is such an antecedent authority that can't be touched. Just like I tell you, like your highways. It, it becomes, an and, and it was conveyed. It, it, it's not a question like a mining claim before patent. That this is an embarrassment. But you see the, the conditioning that even the courts of law, so-called, do. And a lot of that is the way you present the case. And so, long story short, on our, we, our request to Pacific Legal Foundation, when they did not want to take our case but through the administrative provisions, and they couldn't because the mining district is a government, and there is no administration on that level between the two governments. Uh, we had to do, go our own way, and as I as I've told you, we we submitted the case. We found the bar members all to be cro crooks. We identified that, have the record on that. The clerk, it tried to interfere because uh, we were after exactly what this thing is that happened in in Chicago would be happening. We got the method down, and we enjoined that. Now, Again, the government's a big criminal. We are only so big, and we can only do so much. We do have the record, and one day, hopefully, hopefully I'll see it, uh, people will understand the foundation that was laid, and people will start listening to what I'm saying, actually, and not making up what I do to deny me, uh, not me, deny the thing I'm, I, I'm actually saying, and realizing, realizing the multi-level problem that we have in this day and age that wasn't checked even by people before us, uh, which causes all these news, big news items about like the Bundys and things, and our wrong reaction. In my thought, my wrong, our wrong, our knee, uh, our unnecessary, not wrong, but unnecessary reaction to try and check that to make an issue of it, uh, it is our problem today. That I, I haven't found anybody who, who can uh, really identify for me the failure of what I've been saying. In fact, and they can't in a way because we've been using these methods to, to slowly. Find the people that can do what needs to be done and do it that way. Have the mind to do it that way. And we slowly watch this big ship of state in small ways start to have to change its course. Uh, in fact, as I think that, I was seeing in one of the chats somebody made a comment. It's like, a, I'm like an, not responding to me is like walking into an evangelical tent and respond, not responding to the, to the pastor. Uh, this is not like that. We're not talking about intangible things of disbelief, belief, whatever. We're talking about substantial things, objective basis that that we've agreed is an objective basis to be guiding us where these types of things can happen, these difficulties amongst ourselves. That's really what the law is. It's just a guidance. It's an objective guidance. Anybody making a bigger deal about it than that at this point, when we're so far down and occupied and beat down, it's really useless. It's a, it's a va vapid discussion. It's a void, uh, inconsequential review. The only way to stop and make 
the remedy work is you start your own addressment. In this case, uh, Sacramento Grazing Association uh, decided that they weren't going to take it anymore and had the grounds to do it. The objective basis was sitting there in the black and white for them to show that there was no way to encroach upon it. And I told you my caveat to that is the answer is, and this is an administrative answer by the court, which I don't think is adequate. However, there is property. It's out in the public domain. It's not public land. It's not subject to government control or regulation or obstruction without compensation. And now we see an next example of where they'll miss uh, apply a Dangerous Species Act and then also condition the administrative uh, side of uh, of the property, or they, they will administratively make a, an imposition on the property that I can't find in the law. And so we still have another problem. And so this Bundy, th- and all these, all these, the Hammond problem, all this stuff of the foundational basic producers of your country being beat down like this should be a real concern to you. Because without them, you have no example to see there is property. It has an order. It has a relationship. It is being interfered with still. And that without that, you don't have the life that you have. You have what you gave. So you can wait till it's late like this and have to go through and give your hands, answer to a judge who I think is actually wrong in this case at the end. And that's only because I'll say my ignorance of the case totally on the facts rely. Maybe that's all the judge was offered. That's another problem. But it should, do we have the last examples that there's something real about property and there's something real about the Constitution constraints of whether or not they're properly applied. If they're not properly applied, there's something real about that obstruction, that transparent obstruction, that if you don't get a handle on early, you stop putting your head in a stand, stop making excuses, say, I don't have enough time, oh, I don't, it's not so, oh, it's beyond me, I can't learn it. Don't even put 15 minutes a day or whatever, whatever you can put into it, and persistently so, forever. Just like your property rights are forever. They're with you and then they're, they're with you and then they're not. Because you're not here either. If you don't put that kind of intention in, all I can say is those people are bringing martial law and you don't have it anyway. You probably don't have it now. You don't understand you live under the martial rule. It's just a, it, it, it's just at a point where they keep the pressure off of you so that you won't go respond. And so you're being conditioned and you don't even see that. The lack of pressure on you where there's supposed to, where there could be a pressure is a, someone controlling your behavior and you're letting them to not respond because you found it comfortable. So, at any rate, uh, getting back to all this, property exists, there's a, there's a constitution works somewhat. I'm not happy with what I hear uh, with it, but the Bundys have a bigger answer, bigger than they're even bringing out they don't, again, I'm, you know, Cliven Bundy, wish him well, but he doesn't seem to have the sense of the horse he rides to, to, to do his cattle. I don't know why. Uh, people aren't listening, really, to what I'm saying. If they're listening, they're misapplying what I'm saying. Uh, they're not completely thinking about how this works. And we start to hear the problems that really ought not make the news. It's like the what I was talking about, the sugar pine mine. That When I finally got, six months after the fact, Got the paperwork, finally got to see the paperwork. That thing was all avoidable. All that stuff you heard in the news, it was really all avoidable. That case is still sitting in appeal, as I predicted it would be. Why? Because the BLM, that's the culture of crime in the uh, Secretary of Interior, uh, will not want anybody to know the property rights were not amenable to the BLM regulation. It's pretty simple. So, that... Sacramento Association, congratulations. You just proved your, got proof that you had property. Uh, whether or not the answer was totally right, I, I don't know yet. Uh, I'm not, I don't see it. I don't see it in the law they relied on, and I don't see how they could do that uh, imposition anyway, because the land was conveyed. It wasn't underneath the control of the United States government at all. And so, so, so what? Uh, here's another thing. Those of you uh, that don't do much or think you do something but don't actually do, talk a lot. Uh, con- criticize, uh, critique without foundation, uh, don't actually get out and actually do something more than talk about it, uh, talk from it, whatever. Uh, do your research and find how right you are, but don't actually implement it. 
But those that don't get out to impart what they can do are a part of the problem. They become the accessory without understanding it. It's a transparent violation. Uh, here's a non-cricket, though it will violate most everybody who listens to me sentiment. But this is an example of what happens when you don't act. Someone else will. They're figuring it out. It's like they listen behind the woodshed. It's like these other people who we wouldn't want to gain control listen behind the woodshed and do exactly what I tell you to do, notwithstanding our dislike to do it. I don't want to do all this stuff. Uh, well, I, I say I don't really promote running for office. I'm not the guy to run for office. I just I just don't work well in that capacity. But you know what? I work with other people that are. And I put I put everything I have into fortifying their position there. And I can tell you how how much faster and cleaner it works without any other noise and just giving the information to the one that makes the decision to make the right decision. That works so slick. Better than I could ever waste my time trying to run for office. So, you, But we need people to run for office. And so those that want to hurt you take away that their belief system is better than the Constitution or the wisdom of, of the ages that, that tried to be wrapped up in something. We have a Constitution that made a supposed limited form of government. And our failure to keep all that memory that was reserved to us is being invoked to control uh, you uh, uh, through your inaction right here. This is a non-cricket answer, and it's a cricket on our side, if you will. It's a non-crickets for those that come together and figured this thing out. Five years after Sandy Hook, U.S. gun control advocates switch strategy. And I'm thinking, well, what strategy could they do? It's exactly what I've told you what they do. They've figured it out. That while you're sitting around doing nothing, or complaining about it all, or saying that you have nothing you can do, someone's doing something and it's coming down the pike. Those people in Chicago with all of those guns and the U.S. peacekeepers, are, they're going to get some people in office here that are going to advance that uh, lickety split like light speed. Five years after the gunman killed 20 children at uh, six adults at a con Connecticut, Connecticut elementary school, advocates who are disappointed with the failure of efforts to limit access to firearms are changing their strategy. Instead of pressuring lawmakers to push new gun control measures through the United States Congress, volunteers from groups including Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense in America are now running for office themselves. Folks, if you're not in the, someone of you is not in the office, they're making the decisions. They don't care. We found out they don't care to be derelict in the office. Cook County, that commissioner could care less. And he wasn't even bashful to him. And I'm thankful, thank you for admitting you were derelict in your office. At least we know you took responsibility to the, at least admit to the fact that you caused that problem that allows people to kill themselves. Now, let's just move him out the way, folks. But if you don't have someone to replace him with a more, the better sense, uh, I don't know what's going to happen, how this works better, because you, those of you that can and better position, uh, to do so, don't step up and just run for office and take it. And yeah, you'll find out all kinds of problems with it, but the point is is that you have to start running smart about it. And it may not be a whole bunch of you running in one area. I found out if you run too many people in one area, you can actually dilute the vote, the, the vote and the status quo, uh, good old boy system, uh, internationalist wins because you had too many good-hearted people wanting to do the right thing, jumping in and uh, dividing the vote down. So you have to have an organized approach to a vote as well. And as I've told you, I was told oh, by that same English teacher uh, to, to use the word, uh, to, ex to extract the word of after the word myriad. Uh, he was the one that did the, the, the analysis of what it takes to overthrow status quo. If you don't get, at least by measures, if you bills, you can't get at least 68% of the vote out the majority of which voting for your measure, you will not pass status quo because over 30% is is at least, right, the minimums of the numbers, at least 30% is in the government supporting the government already. And you have to go past the majority. And then you have some failures. So he he, he figured out a very interesting insight because he's been right pretty much all this time. And, and he's no longer with us either. So that, that wisdom, that observation, that research capacity, that knowledge is gone from us. Well, to the little extent I just told you and extended it to you. And so, running for office, the people who don't want the gun, you to have a gun, the same ones that would vote in the UN, 
are going are now running for offices to change this law. Go ahead and keep complaining, folks. And I can you can just see the future coming down. And remember too, they're talking on congressional uh, the congressional side. I don't know how much uh, effort that you can put in on all that. I don't know how this thing really works down to commercialize a permit situation uh, for the bearing of an arm that's a constitutional prohibition against the government to to in, to interfere with. How are they even doing that? And yet they're doing it. The Bar Association members and robes have gotten it there. The same group that agrees in principle to tie a knot in the barrel of your gun. What, what's wrong with this picture is the answer. And remember, the firearm is a very narrow class of thing. It's not your right to bear arms thing. And, and so if you don't know that, you're missing it as well. But again, the non-crickets are going to win the day. These people are going to run to the office and they're going to be in the seated decision that makes these things happen. And if uh, those of you that are capable don't, you are, you've essentially allowed it. You've been, become the accessory to the crime against all of us. Now, someone of you that would get into that and then contact me, we could work together, maybe even through somebody else, uh, on how you were going to maintain uh, the objective basis and not allow the encroachment of the internationalization. So I work better back there in the background. And the information that comes out is very concise, it's on point, and typically it has been unassailable. And it's not that it's a big, a big trick. It's right in the code to identify the limitations uh, of uh, that are upon what can happen. And it, it, it exposes the extravagance of any other one coming against that. And so I, I say this stuff all the time. I don't know if people really uh, you know, hear what I'm saying about it. And, and that it's not just a thought. It's not just thinking. It's, it's then moving it up into action where you best work, not, not just uh, anything. And I know some people don't like political office. I certainly don't. But I also realize I'm not the guy in that office to do that. I certainly work, well, the way it's worked out is I certainly have been much more effective being able to help those in office that have the mind to be, well, the mind that, that, that can see that transparent overthrow and can actually work against it and have the, those skill sets to deal with people that are of that, that mind. I don't have much patience uh, for that mindset at all. Zero, actually. And I think it's a waste of time to try and deal with it. So I'm not the one to do the diplomatic thing on that level. I think it's actually ultimately diplomatic just to call out the problem, let's end it, solve the problem, and get on to the next thing if there's another problem. I'm not one to try and uh, PC, you know, politically correctly uh, discuss how we're going to go from being standing in the fire from standing out and watching the fire. But there's people that can do that, and I appreciate them. I mean, it's something I can't do. And when we work together, things go so much smoother. Everything goes pretty quick. So the problem is we need people in places. We need to place ourselves there. So those that don't want guns, they're putting themselves in the office. They're doing what I told you you all need to do that have the capacity to. And don't make excuses. You may not want to do it, may not like to do it, but if you find out that you're the kind that can do it, you have to forego yourself. Get over yourself. Switching gears a little bit and strategies and naming and finding out stuff, uh, getting the information that you need, uh, how these people that are in the system to bring on the technocracy are running this thing down on us right in front of our face, how we uh, implement it f for us. Uh, we have some information coming through uh, as well. It gets into... Uh, see what, what's kind of writing all this other stuff. We haven't even got a handle on what I've been talking about for the last hour and a half. And then we have this new control system, system coming inside to control all that. These, this commissioner that uh, we were talking about, at least it's flesh and blood. Uh, what we're trying, what they're trying to put on, foist on us is these uh, so-called AIs, uh, the so-called uh, artificial intelligence. And uh, it, it starts to pose a bigger and bigger problem on who's going to be making the decisions. If you think we have a problem now. In one regard, I think it's okay because if I go by the objective basis and I have a computer that's looking at the code and I say, computer, uh, this is the code you can't operate and it's programmed not to go past that limitation, I'd probably get a faster answer from a computer about the truth of that than I would about some uh, suited or uh, suited uh, a goon 
uh, pretending to be my, an officer in the government uh, for upholding the law. Uh, from that standpoint, I think this might be cool. However, that's not the way it's going to work. And so we're going to have to look at how we're going to be worked by this. And uh, as I look down, I see Bo Diddy who shows up in the chat room, and I haven't heard from him for a long time. So, Bo Diddy, thank you uh, for showing up in the chat. Appreciate to see you around. Been a long time. Suspicious. Now, what? Here, here's the thing, folks. You got There's the story, but I want to go to the rollout about what this starts to happen. Suspicious event routes traffic from big name sites through Russia. It was a headline. So immediately we got the Russia Gate thing going on, but you know it's it's all it's Israel Gate is really what that is. But the Russia Gate comes out. Oh, we got to pump this sensational, suspicious in quotes. Event routes traffic for big name sites through Russia. Google, Facebook, Apple, Mac, and Microsoft all affected by intentional, quote, intentional BGP mishap. Traffic sent to and from Google, Facebook, or Apple, Microsoft was briefly routed through a previously unknown Russian internet provider Wednesday under circumstances researchers said was suspicious and intentional. Now, I don't know, I want to read more. There's talks all about the company and all this. I want you to consider your digital future life and your Bitcoin and your, your wallets. What's in your wallet, folks? What exact, what's this advertisement they used to be? What's in your wallet, folks? They were anticipating, they were anticipating the future. And that this can happen. That information, data was rerouted. I don't care where it went. That it could be rerouted and nobody knows. I started to bring up the idea about this point, about the AI, they're telling us they turn on the machine and the AI now is capable of making its own language and making its own computer code. I want you to hang that out over there as I move through here and point out something in the article uh, that I highlighted and put out on the Twitter sphere uh, that check, the quote was, remain, it remains unclear what engineers inside AS395 uh, 23 did. AAS 2395 was the point, the node that accepted the information that it got rerouted to. The engineers were, uh, it, did, it was from the outside. They didn't know that what the engineers inside that uh, server uh, system, that, that function were doing. A secondary checkpoint. The rerouting was the result of a so-called autonomous system. Okay? Autonomous system. We're talking about your autonomous cars. This is what's done by an autonomous system. And my question is, how will it look different when the engineer is a rogue AI and decided to reroute? You know, I put two hashtags, ghost in the machine and crypto economy. And I put a little upside down head because uh, we're going to be on our head. This is They're thinking that there's a people in there that did this. Folks, I don't know if you're aware the you know the AI is this has been unleashed on the internet for probably a decade by now, and things have been manipulated. And we start finding out more and more about it. Let me just kind of jump you into the future just a little bit. That AI actually did this. The autonomous system actually did this rerouting because it had a purpose <laughs> for all your information, and it's making decisions for you. It doesn't matter that it was in Russia. Forget all that. It's that this system did this. And they don't know where the who the engineers were that did this. And they don't know. It was all of a sudden just popped up. And I want you to just put yourself into the future AI world. When everybody finds the biases and you see all the people and the, and the corruption that goes on in the government, and we finally say, oh, get, throw them all out. Let's put a computer in its place. What do, you, what do you think the world can look like, folks? They get into every These AIs apparently can do lots of interesting and fantastically looking things. They can root anything. They can plan to root anything. They can decide to get information they want. They can root down to get, uh, rouse the homeless, I even hear. All right? Your whole life works on an algorithm, apparently. And they are in the decision because they run the Internet, and that's where your life is. And an autonomous system decides to take the information and reroute it someplace, and nobody knows who and why and how and for what reason. Is this the future you want to put your cryptocurrency in? You want to put your blockchains in for all your property? Is this the system that you want to have all your milk, your food uh, tracked out through? Is this really the future that you want, or is it the future they want? 
Is this the technocrats? They just tripped here and they messed up and told you how AI is going to start to do things and nobody understands it. See, we've been dealing with the idea that there are going to be some people to make these decisions. We're too soon into the process to understand. I've told you the silent weapons are quiet wars. They built the system before we got there. They've already been told the world, world monetary system. They've already know they got some weaknesses. They're working it out. They'll fix it. I can see how they're going to do it right here. Uh, but folks, I don't know what to say more. This is that no one knows how this thing got routed. They're blaming Russia so that you get in the sensational side that Russian Putin did it. We're looking at a systems that people are putting into effect. That no, it's like the cherry red button, the atomic bomb. They don't have a clue what this thing does, and they can't stop the reaction once it gets started, and I think it's already partly started. I think it's in this rudimentary form, but it's already there. We may have just gotten a glimpse of this. And your Internet of Things is everywhere, and it's controlled by something that has gained its own uh, capacity to make, so-called, we'll call it, make decisions. It's just a function for it. You might want to consider this as we start getting into this global hype of blockchain technology, what I've been warning you about the danger of it, even as much as I think it's very cool uh, at one level. It, it, this is not run by you. This net neutrality nonsense is not run by you. A bunch of people, another division going on, not controlled by you. A bunch of misinformation. I mean, I'm, I hope, maybe I should check. Am I getting out this uh, after net neutrality? And we get, uh, hello, testing, testing. Well, it seems like my bits haven't been adjusted. So maybe we're quite fine yet. So this is a big game. And uh, we can play it. We can be playing in it. Uh, or uh, we and, and be controlled by it, ultimately. I, I'm not, you know, I just don't know. That's a decision that everybody will make on the globe, apparently, which is an amazing thought to begin with. How is that going to all happen? But it's going to happen partly through this Internet in our inability to continue uh, the, well, the, keeping up. How do you keep up with something you don't understand all of a sudden because it's making its own languages and things? And it's doing it faster than you can even comprehend. And I'm not saying that fast is better. I'm saying it's just more capable. It's just let the fast, it's like, uh, what, Hussein Bolt running down. He's a hunter. He can run the, he's the fastest human, supposedly, you know, or maybe he's uh, like getting older now. But the point, well, okay, so he does that one thing really, really, really well. Does he have someone tie his shoes? I don't know. Can he cook a meal? Well, I don't know. But for the but that, but one thing is, is certain: he can do that fast. That one thing, and that's what these computers do good, whether or not it's right. And so, be careful before we consider that people are making the decisions. What you already see, like in Chicago Cook County, they're already making. He's already said he's derelict. They made a mistake. That they they've caused the problem that they want now the UN to come save me, save me. An entity that's just another big private corporate organization, foreign to them, <laughs> completely abandons his own country's uh, uh, resources and, fo and focus and obligations and duties and property and, and, and just working with people. Completely abandons it. Well, it goes for, uh, well, we're going to keep your gun, but we're going to invite someone with a gun to his stop you because we made a mistake. That's, that's going to be removed and AI is going to be put in its place and we don't know about this AI. Animal shelter faces backlash after using robot to scare off homeless people. Is what people will already do to people. What do you think AI and its efficiencies are going to do to you? When you don't meet a code or a standard that the technocrat has put on you. What, what will it scare up for you? This is people running that, what, K5 robot built by night scope to patrol the sidewalks, they sick this machine on homeless people. If you don't think that it's beyond, you know, we have some safeguards in AI that will readjust what it, it figures is the best pathway to getting something done. And I have to caution you, as the AI, the people understand how to make well, I, I still think it's an inferior technology to do AI with the cu current digital, the current um, uh, switching 
technology that we have, notwithstanding what they claim to be quantum and possibly thermal resolution differentiation, I don't know that that is not that. I haven't had explaining anybody explain to me beyond that, but given the current technology, given that we're going to stay there, and given the people that are doing this become practice, they become the best that they are, take and make computer programs that are more natural in how they respond, like an organism. I think you better be careful on what it thinks is efficient and needful. And we see a bit of this in nature if you want to start looking at fungus, mushrooms, they call mushrooms of mycelia. They, they will, there's been tests that show that mycelia are really intelligent organisms, uh, colonies of organisms. They will seek out the most efficient way to get somewhere. So as we start to understand these more natural processes that are beyond us to think about, we do it, but we, do, we, we want to challenge it. I'd be cautioning us to, to be careful. We may not understand what so-called AI does as it learns to become more what we already don't understand in nature, what we rely on today as experts say. Get it completely wrong, but we still go down the path of completely wrong. That's all we got. And then there's a protection system, a gang, gang mentality around that. That I think we need to really start considering what this, uh, the, what we see right now, we think it's going to be steady. Uh, people are missing the fact that it's changing right in front of them. Trans, the changes were changing right transparent to them. That when they plug this thing into our lives, and we allow it, and we will allow it, because I don't see any resistance to it. It's going to be moving. You think that having a computer write its own language to more efficiently write more language, more action, is fascinating and scary. And so scary that the the creator, so-called, <laughs> this, this hologram, uh, this this fractal, uh, had to unplug it while they could. Uh, you wait till it till this these uh, algorithms, these these math form, the the way it treats these electrons, becomes a natural process. We don't even understand nature now. You wait till that becomes the intelligence. And Frumpy's saying Hal nine thousand. Hello, yes, Dave. That was always fun. Yeah, sorry, Dave. Yeah, 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 there it is. I mean, we've been told about that. But I'm, I want you to, I'm, I'm repeating myself here a little bit. I want you to consider deeply when you have an official like in Cook County that says, oh, we help, we caused this problem. So we want a foreigner to come in and shoot everybody to keep order under the label of peace. Those are the mentality. That's the same mentality that's, the same mentality that believes it's an expert that understands the world. It's going to make life better for you, only it's going to be the digital world. And that digital world is controlled everywhere. So much so, and almost to their credit, if I can give credit to the New York City, where I might condemn everything else they've done, uh, someone's thought about this, and I don't know if this is to their advantage or not. Uh, they want to put it out there like it's something, uh, you know, these these computer AI algorithms that they use may be prejudicial to certain comp certain people, uh, certain uh, certain classes in the society. Uh, this is their their ostensible statement. But New York City wants to audit the powerful algorithms that control our lives. It's all coming together here, folks. There's, everyone senses this is a. It's not quite right. No, something's not quite right with this. New York City will be among the first cities in the U.S. to earnestly tackle black box algorithms, the automated decision-making systems that are rarely made public but have greater and greater influences over lives. A bill passed by the City Council this week orders the creation of a local task force to monitor and assess the effect of these algorithms on the public. Unless uh, Bill uh, Blasso vetoes the bill, which he is not expected to, the task force will audit the city's algorithms for disproportionate impacts on different communities and come up with ways to inform the public on the role of automation. Not the mistakes it makes, but the role. Well, the role could be to control it most efficiently, so we're not seeing much here. My point is, someone in the New York City Council says, wait a minute now, what's all... Uh, they've got evidence that people's lives are being affected in ways they didn't understand. I want you to take this notice as the notice that that's the future. 
this thing will happen and you won't know why it's happening. You have no way to check it. If the algorithms are what's making decisions, who do you hold privately responsible? Think about this, folks. Who do you hold? Res Part of my method is to find the one making the decision and hold them accountable. Who do you hold accountable when it was a black box? Does anybody kind of move this thing along and think about it? This does have a terrifying aspect to it. When you figure out anybody who's had a bill problem with any company should be terrified right now. I'm pausing. Just it, The impact on me right here is uh, really astonishing as to what we're walking into under experts say. Under evidence, they've already had to pull the plug at least once. The creature, the Frankenstein. The, this Internet is a, is a digital, an electronic mycelium over the entire world, if you haven't figured that out as well. Please take note. Mycelium, or the, the fungus in the ground, is it, it may be the very reason why we exist. It creates the environment. This is going to be our, this, this Internet is becoming that envi another environment. It's really, I mean, I'm kind of intrigued, uh, just kind of exciting just to think about it, but this is real people being really hurt. We're talking, I mean, I don't even want to, I mean, I just thought about the future wars run by computers, you know, I'm, but this is down, future wars, your, your government becomes an AI that wants to bring everybody into code enforcement compliance. I mean, come on. Please, just listen, folks. Listen to what I'm saying. Hear what I'm saying. We have to start getting a handle on this. We can't just take the talents we have, and even as late as we're coming to the digital realm, and allow these up-and-comers to just run on profit and control. It's always migrate to the military complex, always migrate where money might be, always migrate to make a, your life more, more, more secure. And then you start putting two and two together in the notice, the news that we're watching. Even New York City's having trouble. They're saying, wait a minute now. You need to take control of this as well. Somehow that makes, that seems like a viable thing to check out right now, one of the many. Uh, or again, as we go on, in the digital realm, and the Bitcoin, and the controls, and the algorithms, and all this stuff that runs all these things, and the disconnections, and the reroutings, and uh, the, the promotions behind Bitcoin being decentralized and anonymous and all this, and that's all kind of blown by the wayside. I see very interesting non uh, a silence around this problem. If we didn't have uh, more than a, more of a thought we, about the Bitcoin and its anonymity and all this other thing, if we think it's something that we can use that's kind of untouchable and immune, well, here's a story coming out of New York as well. A woman uses Bitcoin to launder money for is is. I bring this up to remind you. I said. The governments will be to control these cryptocurrencies or blockchains that are valued, uh, have a value, um, whether or not it's in value by the by the IRS and how I told you that that should be addressed. Uh, it was found out and used. They're going to use this money laundering and possibly funding terrorism as the uh, the reason for being around the regulation authority. And understand that's going to be brought into commerce when they do that, and everything's going to be valued in that as well. And there's no one that's going to understand how to keep all well, their livelihood and stuff that was made not in commerce was separate from that. No one's doing that. So, I, and I don't know if we recognize right now at the point that they can just take and reroute something. AI will just reroute this, and then, like I've said before, you'd be drawn across a, an intersection and you blow that light. They're going to be just sending you a receipt before you even reach the other side of that intersection with how much they just took out of your bank account for blowing that red light. Same thing here. You might going to do something. You're going to send a Bitcoin somewhere. They'll know it. They'll see it. You'll be rerouted to the to the local sheriff to turn yourself in. And if you don't, they'll come with a SWAT team. You may not make it across that intersection. You may see a hellfire coming out from the uh, eye in the sky and then blow you up right across the intersection. So you won't do that again. And it serves a notice to everybody else. You better have some money in your bank. What's in your wallet, folks? New York woman used Bitcoin to launder money for ISIS. To me, was just to notice what I've been telling you, what they're going to use to bring on the control of all the blockchains. 
and they'll illegalize them. And so the question will be, and a lot of people will try it and do it, uh, what chances do you want to do to continue to maintain? It's not that you won't be able to do it. It's that if they catch you, you'll be considered a criminal. And there will be no evidence that you'll have to be able to prove you didn't money launder money when this thing gets working or you didn't send it to some terrorist group, which will be fabricated just on the activity of somebody. As I've told you before, all this is done. AI starts to put all this together. They don't even need a guy on behind the scenes. They just start looking for all this evidence without a thought, and they just put it together. This probability is this guy's a terrorist, uh, and this other guy's making money donations to a terrorist. Next thing you wonder, why SWAT team's blowing up your house, yanking you out if you survive. Why? Because they, they don't want people to even encroach on these ideas. And in the news, again, the notice continues. I told you to be careful about how this rolls out. EU agrees to clamp down on Bitcoin platforms to tackle money laundering. There is no presumption of innocence anymore. I told you this as well. But the EU is the place they've gone. They didn't do it in the United States. European Union states and legislators, and this I found this fascinating, the states and the legislators have agreed. I'm a little confused on, on that dis distinction, but there it was. States and le European Union states, these uh, the Europe that's been unified, uh, and the legislators agreed on Friday on stricter rules to prevent money laundering and terrorism financing on exchange platforms for Bitcoin and other virtual currencies, the EU said in a statement. Other virtual currencies. It's not about Bitcoin. It's about the technology. The agreement in a, is part of a broader set of measures to tackle financial crimes and tax evasion. Oh, you're hurting the bottom line. They're not getting their, their stuff. They want their stuff. Now, here's an extension that's going on even further uh, that, that may affect behind a woodshed. This is what I use when I'm trying to send money digitally. EU legislators backed stricter controls of prepaid cards and raised transparency requirements for the owners of trusts and companies. So this is not even new news that they're coming after all of these things. They want control of it. All this will probably be blockchain. The point is that they're going to regulate this thing under the auspices and presumption that your all activity is a financial crime, money laundering, or tax evasion to allow it. And I'm going to hear crickets on all this about this. When you guys are all promoting the, 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 the blockchain technology, you're not going to protect yourself against this presumption of guilt. As I was pointing out to you, the presumption of the person liable that the IRS has done at Coinbase. See, all this stuff eventually I talk about, it does tie together whether you recognize that I'm telling you this stuff. Again, not, it's, I really, I hesitate to say that because it sounds like, oh yeah, I'm predicting the future. I am predicting the future, but not in a, like a, it's not like this vision oracle thing. It's all written, folks. It's all, they explain it to us as they go. I don't even have to know I don't have to read much, uh, really, anymore. It's just right here. They're they're rolling out the plan. And, and this is all connected. And you see, week to week, it's all connected. As long as we're crickets, well, they're going to get it anyway, I think, because it's just the momentum is just too great. Uh, you see what happens on the global scale. If they don't want, if someone doesn't want pet, uh, petrochemicals in the world, they just stop subsidizing it. That's what I told you a long time ago, about, like electric cars. If they really wanted to do, if the United States really wanted to cut this out, if it was really a thing, they would give everybody all the solar panels they needed and, and the electric car to pull it off. And you would be able to generate your own electricity relative to that one use, and, po and hopefully your home as well, as I said. I've explained all this, because they subsidize it through tax credits. But that's through the commerce side again, and deriving income from a source of the taxpayer, not all people. So you see the limitation of the government right there as well, but it wasn't. They're not basing this this whole thing on global climate change because they have to. It's a behavioral policy control system. Otherwise, you'd all have uh, even 30% efficient solar cells and an electric car. They would it would subsidize it so you would have it for free. Well, they make up everything else, right? This is not that hard. If this was true, we would fix this. Even as efficient as our technology is, we would still fix that part, and we don't. And that has to tell you something. This is all about continuing control. It's not about fixing anything. And I'm, I, I think about that, I get sad, because I think we are, 
and I don't, I'm not limited to the United States. I think people are really, really ingenious. And if we really could pull together and weren't interfered with, with people who are, want to be in the control stru- constraint, the technocrats, we would bring on all that technology that would actually help us. And it would be so-called Democrat. It would be spread out everywhere. Listen, I always have, a, I'm having more and more trouble, so I'm just going to say it. If they can spend electricity to run a Bitcoin, which I find out runs about 10 to 20 bucks to do one right now, uh, as some, as a, I don't know if I'm going to get to it about the power usage, uh, why isn't your merits as, as valuable than just burning up a bunch of electricity through a digital computer to make up something called a Bitcoin? Why isn't our action as much energy that we could benefit from that as money? We're so close to understanding it as people. I'm wondering why we aren't making that jump of, that quantum jump of, of understanding instead of the Bitcoin, which is still going to be considered controllable and fiat. It is. I mean, they're equating it. So we have a different path. We're not choosing it. And until you start seeing, at least I feel, until you start seeing the, uh, the pathways that I'm seeing that they're using the control side for, so you, can, uh, you can't avoid them, I guess. If you can't see that, you're not going to avoid it. And I'm not talking about mouth in it. I'm talking about actually being able to analyze it. And there's a whole other level of analyzing how this works. And I'm, knowing, I'm now realizing that uh, while doing it in a court case. Uh, anyway, I spoke a little bit earlier. I won't go back into it. I can't. Uh, the point is, we are being controlled. These people are making you all criminals. And I hear crickets about it. No one stands up for the better side of this. And so it will not have that voice they talk about as needed. It, it cannot, because no one's speaking for it. No one's standing up to show those that mouth and hip, hypocrisize all this stuff don't intend to do anything but hurt. Well, it, there's another answer which would help. Does, I mean, I don't get this point. Where do these people who want to run a bunch of batteries, and folks, I've told you, I'm all up on this. In the When I was coming through high school, I was designing electric cars on the technology we had. Major, major problems at the time. We just didn't have the power to weight de- density that ion generate, uh, lithium ion can do now, and they're coming down with better. Perfect stuff. But the bottom line was, where do, okay, you make a battery. Where do you charge this battery? And when you look at the system that's going to go back, that's supposed to be gr- so-called green technology, it won't supply it. It can't keep up. You're going to rely on the same coal and petrochemicals as you did. What you're doing is redistributing the style of the energy disp- uh, d- expenditure. If you go to solar and you give everybody panels, however, for that car and your house, you don't have to use it. You can actually diminish the entirety of the system grid. But guess what? They can't control you then, can they? That's why it's not happening. We have a subtle answer. It's not the best answer, but we have an answer. We're not going to use it. We are not. We would use it as people. The government, those technocrats in government, the type that would say, we failed the people, so we want to bring in a foreigner to shoot you all, are the ones that are going to win because you're crickets. You're not standing up for yourself. You're going to be deemed to be a terrorist money laundering uh, uh, to avoid a tax you owe. And no one's going to say, wait a minute, where was my right outside of that? No one will know how to say it. You'll argue with me. Oh, there's no, you can't. What are you going to do with the law? What are you going to do with the policy? Oh, what are you going to do with your letter? How far did that get you? Instead of doing it and seeing how far it gets you and then pulling up with everybody didn't. It, it got you in the law and you found out who was going to divide, to dis, divide you, try to divide you and then violate the law. That's another knowledge you have to have. Money laundering. Terrorism, it's all, it seems all made up. It is, is, is up. That's, up. that's coming through again. It's like all these stories just can regurgitate over and over. Oh, now they're proving it. The United States did in fact make is, is. No kidding. Well, how long ago have I been saying is, is, is us? How long did I say is us? A couple years? And yet this brings the news. And then we find out this other group that we find out. Remember, we have to be careful where we get our news. I identified this as a question. I'm still, I mean, this is almost proving it out that it, it was the thing to be careful of. The intercept withheld NSA doc uh, that may have altered the course of Syria war. Well, when you go read through it, maybe it would be more than a may. That's sure softening up. But the intercept shows itself to be the gatekeeper of the information that uh, was not being given out. And we questioned it at the time. Most anybody who looked at it said, 
but this is a problem. And so they withheld documentation that could, that any, I mean, if you had the information, you could have made, you, I guess you couldn't have, you didn't have to make a different decision, but the odds are you would have. On Tuesday, the Intercept published a heretofore unknown document from the Trove of the National Security Administration document leaked by Edward Snowden over three years ago. The document was notable as it shed light on the early days of the Syrian conflict and the fact that for the past six years, so-called revolutionary groups aimed at toppling Syrian President Bashar al-Assad have exclusively acted as proxies for foreign governments pushing regime change. No, duh. Not Florida, duh. No, duh. Do we need to know that? Well, we do know now. And the Intercept withheld that. And who owned the Intercept? And how does that lineage is all I talked about it back on the years ago. It was a big question to me uh, that these people are all in on it. They're in to help control. They're part of the main the media, if they're called alternative or not. They're part of the information exchange that controls your mind. Blowback is, is, is got a powerful missile the CIA secretly bought in Bulgaria. And we find the connection again. No, duh. Do you think, folks? I mean, what is this even new? I said, there's another thing that came through about, and here it is. What is this? Why is this even news, actually? And here's another one. Pentagon acknowledges secret UFO investigation program. Now, I've got half of you to listen now. I said UFO, and I said secret. In a $600 billion annual defense budget, uh, department budget, the $22 million spent on advanced aerospace threat identification program was almost impossible to find. So let's, that's a whole article trying to go through and, and, it, and ramps up the secrecy part of this, how it was hard to do. Uh, the, uh, the title to the actual article is Glowing Auras and Black Money. Oh, another, oh, we got to look now. The Pentagon's Mysterious UFO Program. I sent out a tweet. Why is this news? Someone used the word secret, shadowy, and UFO? Because it certainly can't be that the Pentagon would want to know about anything unified flying over the area. Or to FOTA. T-U-F-O-T-A. Why is this even news? You think the Pentagon wouldn't want to know about something they didn't identify that was flying over the area? Absolutely would. Why is this an issue? Why would they even want to tell you with all these idiots in the world that when you say UFO and government, they're trying to hide some spaceship coming from an alien? Is why you didn't get told and why they kind of buried this stuff. It's our own fault, folks. I don't know what else to say about us and what there's some people actually looking at our frailties, our foibles, and trying not to make trouble for themselves. Okay, there might be some UFOs. Okay, but are they a threat? I think your your government would want to know about that in a world that isn't peace on earth, nor goodwill toward men, or women, or babies, or your fuzzy ones. Thank you for tuning in today. I hope something I said, get your thoughts thinking, your juices rolling, more importantly that you figure out, focus down on something that you want to make right, that you find wrong, and just make it so. There's people out there that can probably help refine the knowledge that you have, refine more importantly the experience by which you go and do the knowledge and deal with people on a, a private level if you can and then if not then you do the most of more official objective basis what we call the law the code the regulation on them the official who's taken an oath to supposedly uphold it and you'll sometimes sometimes like today you see cook county they actually admit to it uh, that they did it wrong so thank you again grimner uh, real liberty media.com appreciate what you do there Blogcaster um, behind the woodshed uh, jewels at ucy.tv uh, thank you for your recast and podcast. And I think I haven't seen the recast on Thursday uh, as on the list of YouTube. I have to talk to you about that. But anyway, thank you for doing what Oliver you do to get the word out. And to you, anybody in the terrestrial rock broadcasters that haven't contacted me lately, thank you very much. I appreciate what you've done. And uh, I'll be here next week. Tech diffs are nature willing. another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, Journey with Purpose.
that's what opening up a can of whoop-ass feels like. Son, I just opened a whole case of whoop-ass. 